Okay, so this is a, hopefully going to be a brief video on how to go from Qualtrics from a survey into um, SPSS and to clean up your data set, score your variables, score your survey, and do a little bit of data analysis. We're going to look at this teacher's sense of self-efficacy scale that I disseminated via social media. I've gotten 27 responses and we're going to take a look at that. I've got my uh, survey and I'm going to go to data and analysis. I'm going to go to export data. I'm going to pick SPSS. Double click on this to open it. Okay, so it pulls up like this, and this is in data view, and here we are in variable view. Now Qualtrics will give you a lot of things you didn't necessarily ask for. So we have the start date, end date, status, IP address, progress, duration, in seconds, finished, reported date, response ID, and then last name, first name, email, external reference, we didn't ask for that, so it's not filled in. Um, location latitude, location longitude, anonymous English. And then here's where the survey begins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and just delete all of these uh, variables. You can see here, I used a matrix for my survey. So each uh, label is the same with the directions and then it has the item. Uh, and then my options, I had a nine point Likert scale. So what I need to do is go to the text of the directions for the survey and figure out which of these items go with which construct. So if I pull up the directions for the survey, this is the long form, but I used the short form. Okay, so this is 12 items, and if I go to the directions, for the short form I have items 2, 3, 4, and 11 for student engagement. Okay, so 2, 3, 4, and 11. So I'm going to go to 2 and say SE underscore 1 for student engagement number 1, SE underscore 2, so 2, 3, 4, and 11. SE underscore 3, and then down here, SE underscore 4. Now just to be clean, I'm going to put those guys all together. Let's go back. Um, instructional strategies, 5, 9, 10, and 12. IS underscore 3. 12 is underscore 4. Now the last one is classroom management. 1, 6, 7, and 8. That should be all we have left. And here I need to be careful that I'm looking at the original one. So this is 1. So this is classroom management underscore 1, 6, 7, and 8. So what I want to do is put everybody together. So I have classroom management one here. I'll bring that down here. I have instructional strategies here. If I hope I get all three of those right there. So now I have uh, student engagement one through four, instructional strategies one through four, classroom management one through four. Okay, so now I need to do, these are the um, items that make up this particular construct, student engagement. So the first thing I want to do is know what my reliability is. So I'm going to go to scale. So I go to analyze, scale, reliability analysis. I'm going to right click to see all of the variable names. I'm going to bring those items over and say OK. And I have a 0.77. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to take these guys back. 
and do instructional strategies. I'm clicking the first one, holding down shift, clicking the next one, bring it over, leave it the same. I've got a 0.713. I'm going to my recall dialog box, go to reliability, hold down shift, pull those guys back, come down here, bring those guys over, hit OK. I've got a 0.86. So all in all, not bad. 0.77 is good. 0.713 is kind of sketchy, but it'll it's over 0.7, which is kind of the thought we rule of thumb. And then we have 0.87. <clears throat> Alright, so now the next thing I need to do is I need to um, transform compute variable. And what I want to do is make total, I have to use an underscore, student engagement in average. So let's go back to compute variables, but my total student engagement, I want to stick in the parentheses. I'm going to do student engagement 1 plus student engagement 2 plus 3 plus 4. I'll come outside of the, the uh, parentheses, divide by 4, and I get the code that's executed. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to change it to instructional strategies. Now what I could do is delete all of this and do it again, but I'm just going to do it the quick way. New shift, oops, instructional strategies. If I hold down shift and build the back button and do control copy, and then I just replace these. Because the variables are the same, they just have this leading uh, two letters are slightly different. Okay, so now I've done that, I'm going to say OK. Now we have a total instructional strategies. I'm going to do that one more time with classroom management. CM, I'm going to hold down shift, go back, control copy, pause by my say OK. Alright, and then I want to do one more. Well, I'm going to do the total TSES. So the whole, the whole deal. So what I'm going to do, since I've already got these guys in there, I'm going to add these. So I'm going to say plus student, student engagement one, plus student engagement two, and I'm just going to add the other two constructs to this and divide by 12. I'll pause. <clears throat> All right, so I've gone through, I had classroom management already in there. I added in student engagement, one through four, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, instructional strategies, one through four. And now I, you could just type it, even though like, I, can, I could delete this. And then type it in, or I can use these click, click buttons, but you don't, it doesn't matter. It's the same. So I'm going to say OK. And there we have, let's go to our... So we have total student engagement, total instructional strategies, total uh, classroom management, and total TSES. So that's the total scale. Now, let's look at this question. This says, how many years have you been teaching? So what are we going to call this variable? We're going to say years of experience. Let's just do EXP. Gender, and then this is text entry. So if they chose differently identified, they could I, they could write it in. So I'm just going to leave that one blank. Uh, level of ed, and then also text entry, and then age. That's all I asked. Okay, so this data set is now completely ready to go. I've, I've done everything that I want to do in order to clean it up. I've labeled all my variables. I've totaled and, and scored my variables and I've even run the liability. Um, I can show you a few things to do just to get some descriptive statistics. So let's look at descriptives. Let's see how many... I'm going to right click to show the variable names. I want to see... Uh, how many males and females we had. I want to see uh, 
uh, level of education, and this is in frequencies. So these are, uh, even though they say they're scale variables, they're actually nominal variables. So let's see. So I had six males and 21 females, five with bachelors, 16 with masters, and six with other. And I would imagine those are PhDs because these are friends from grad school. Let's look. PhD, PhD, PhD. So, yeah. Okay. All right, so let's look at age. Um, it's interesting. It's, it came across as nominal. So there was somebody must have written something in there. No, they've got numbers. So I don't know why it's telling us that it's nominal. So let's go here. I know why. Because this is, says string. So for some reason it thinks it's a word. Maybe because I allowed them to write it in so it doesn't treat it as a number. Okay, so now that I've told it it's numeric, I can come over here and pick scale, because otherwise I can't run statistics on it. All right, so we have age, and years of experience will be the same thing, because I allowed them to type it in, and that's good statistics. You don't want to make a nominal variable out of something that can be categorical. I mean, it's continuous. It's, uh, it's bad form. You're, you're losing information if you do that. So we always want to allow people to type in years of experience and type in their age, but Qualtrics will, will um, sometimes bring it over as, well, it will bring it over as a string variable, so you have to tell it what type it is. We can do it in frequencies. Reset this. Age and years of experience. Let's look at our statistics. I want the mean, median, standard deviation, minimum, and maximum. You say OK. OK. All right, one more thing I'll show you. To eliminate having those frequency tables, let's run it again without that. All right, so let's look down here. We have um, one person missing how many years they've been teaching. But the mean average, or the mean age is 58. The median age is 50. Standard deviation of 10, minimum was 26, and the maximum is 70 years old. How many years have you been teaching? Uh, the mean is 17, the median is 16 years, standard deviation of 10, minimum years teaching, 4, and the maximum 42. All right, so now let's just look a little bit at what we can do. Let's do a comparison. Uh, independent samples t-test. I just want to see uh, if there are differences in gender, even though we have very unequal sample sizes, um, on these constructs. And I believe gender was coded as 1 and 2. And so I'm going to say OK. Alright, so males have what seems to be um, descriptively, we're just looking at descriptive statistics here. So the average student engagement, males feel less eff efficacious because they scored themselves lower than women. However, in instructional strategies, they scored themselves higher than women. And then in classroom management, they scored themselves lower than women and overall, they scored themselves lower than women. But we're not sure if this is a statistically significantly different um, result. And if I look here, it's significance two-tailed. I'm not going to go into what this is until we cover that. But I can see that there is no statistically significant differences between males and females on any of these constructs. Could be because I have such unequal sample sizes, and my sample size is fairly small. I only had 27, 26, I can't remember. But um, that's how we would analyze these data.